before Prophet Muhammad was sent as a messenger, uh, he was known as the honest, the trustworthy. The tribes that were living in the village of Mecca at the time used to have so much pride in that uh, building and used to, again, use it for hanging the poetry thing and stuff like that. So anyway, one, uh, during the flood or some other uh, weather uh, problem, the, some of the building was demolished. So they put it piece by piece and then the last piece was this black stone. And each one of the tribes wanted to have the honor of putting it back in place. So they were almost at a civil war level and then a wise man from them said, okay, let's make the first person to enter on us the judge. So it was Prophet Muhammad who entered this and everybody was happy, okay, it's the honest, it's the trustworthy. So what did he do? He said, okay, take my uh, dress. Uh, there is a traditional dress, though not mandated by religion, but it's, it's the long garment. I don't know if you see in the TV some, especially in the Gulf area, they wear the long white. So he had one with him, the hill, put the, the stone on it. And each leader of the tribes hold one part of it and carry it there, and I will put it myself in there. So he had the honor of putting it himself and saving the area from a civil war. And so that's just the story of this. That, um, the building currently is a three-story. Uh, they kept enlarging and enlarging and doing a lot of renovations. Uh, there is one on the way now. But anyway, that was like, I believe the last renovation was 20 years ago. So this is from the third floor. Uh, you can see how full it is. And it's only full like that in the month of Ramadan and uh, during the pilgrimage season. Uh, this image, as you can see up there, 1954. So you can imagine the difference in 50 years could make. And that's during prayer. And here you see the full rounds. Muslims from everywhere are there. And Muslims everywhere in the world are also directing themselves toward them. That's another image of night. Uh, that's the walls from outside. A flood in 1941. You can see people swimming rather than walking. So. And that's from a satellite, I believe. So it shows you the complex, how it looks. And you see the black cube in the middle. That's an aerial image. Another one. That's it. Oh, <coughs> this is a foot, the footsteps of Prophet Abraham is marked at this exact location of this place. You have the footsteps engraved somewhere. It was saved and engraved there. Um, so, uh, and it's right across from the main entrance of the Kaaba, the, the black you see there, the person standing right there in front of it. Medina. This is the city of Medina where Prophet Muhammad immigrated to after uh, he was 53 then, 13 years after giving the prophethood. Uh, that's the mosque from outside and this uh, green dome is where he, uh, the main mosque at the time and where he is buried now. That's an uh, uh, view. And that's on the left, this place, that's where he is buried now. And it was his house, which was like a one room thing. Uh, that's the same way we, we, we pray in this direction. Just the architecture inside. The green room again. And that's from outside. And that's also from satellite, you see the whole complex of it. And 
things here. So, so. I want to talk a little bit about uh, what is called Islamophobia and link that in a way to a campaign that I'm involved in right now, which is to include the two Muslim annual holidays into the school uh, calendar on, in New York City. Um, this is a report done by a group called Fair, Fairness and Accuracy in Reporting. It's a left-wing uh, organization. I'm not a left-wing per se, I'm not a right-wing, I'm a human wing, so whatever is right, I go with. So just, uh, if you can move. They showed uh, about 12, they called them the dirty dozen. Uh, they have their pictures about uh, what they do uh, that they use every chance to smear, that's why it's called smear casters, uh, to smear Islam and Muslims and link anything that happens in the world to the teachings of Islam. Um, I, I guess the, 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 the pictures are not there, but I just wanted to mention this one. Um, regarding the campaign for the Muslim model, so you can go back to the horizon if you like, please. Thank you. The campaign for Muslim school holidays. Three years ago almost, a statewide test was uh, planned for a day that happened to be the Muslim holiday. So children had to choose between doing that test or celebrating their religious holidays. It was happening anyway for all the years back and it's still happening until today. But on that particular day, there was kind of a, you know, the sport brought the cameras back. So a campaign was formed of more than 80 organizations, civil rights, civil liberties, uh, community, religious, and labor organizations, and countless individuals to work on that uh, matter. Right now in schools, as I know, Christmas, um, Hanukkah, uh, Yom Kippur. Not Hanukkah. I'm sorry, not Hanukkah. Uh, Yom Kippur is one. Anyway, so there are religious organizations, uh, I mean, holidays that are now in the schools. So these two days, uh, these two holidays are actually three days and four days respectively, but what we're asking for, one and one. Uh, we did a lot of studies. We asked NYU to do studies. We asked Columbia to do studies, and they came up with many uh, reports that says the actual incorporation of them will not really uh, make a big dent because since the, lo the Muslim calendar is a lunar calendar similar to the Jewish calendar, it falls back every year, and therefore it might usually fall on another holiday or summer recess or something like that. Long story short, um, the city council last month on June 30th passed a resolution slam dunk 50 to 1 approving that, but it's only a resolution. The mayor has the final say because he has the school control, under him, so that's what we're working on now. Just want to bring one example uh, of the coverage. Staten Island Advance, thankfully, printed a uh, piece when the Education Committee of the City Council passed the resolution to the General Council. So the piece, if you can see it, is just one page. But I have in my hand 43 pages. The rest is comments, most of it are vile on silive.com. It is unbelievable uh, the amount of hate, ignorance that you find on SILive.com comment section. Um, for the first time ever, I was off these two days because I was involved in the campaign. So when I read the piece online and I realized, I mean, I, I had known, I had some experiences, but I have not participated. But this time, I really did put some time in it. I did nothing for two days, but respond and try to explain and educate and all do this stuff. My conclusion is everything, almost everything goes back to 9-11. Okay. So again, the link, the difference between Muslim and Islam. If I'm not following Islam, don't link me to Islam. Don't say that I'm doing something in the teachings because I'm not doing the teachings. 